Welcome to the Future Leaders Fellowship's Renewal Scheme. The following slides will cover key points about the renewal scheme and assessment process, some commonly asked questions and some information about the FLF Development Network. So what is the FLF Renewal? It is a continuation to the original FLF funding, allowing the seven-year vision to be reached. It's a new request for funding that has not yet been assessed, aiming to ensure progression and assurance for use of funds and ensure support from the host organisation. There is a presumption of funding of £567,000 of UKRI funding, 80% FEC for those hosted by academia over three years. And fellows are not in competition against one another for funding and following panel discussion, there will not be any ranking of applications. Because the proposed project has not yet been assessed, this does allow for more flexibility to allow changes in direction in response to the original FLF fellowship outcomes and or activities. And we have aimed to create a simple process that is low impact on the fellow's current activities. So just some updates to the scheme from April 2023. So the FLF Renewal Scheme has had a high level success rate and we have successfully funded fellows to continue their fellowship. Though noting the success of the scheme, we want the process to be as efficient as possible. So based on feedback and internal assessment of the scheme, we've implemented some improvements. Due to the ongoing nature of the scheme, these have had to be implemented as a phased process for those applying to meet in six, meeting the original documentation, but with the removal of peer review. From those applying to meeting seven onwards, the new guidance will apply in its entirety. Whilst we have endeavoured to lessen the process associated with the renewal, the principles and integrity of the scheme remain the same. The process is aligned with the understanding that fellows have already been through a vigorous assessment process and support the aims of the renewal, which is to provide a continuation of, of funding. So what is, no long, what is needed now? So no longer use the external written peer review comments. There's the removal of invite to submit and expression of interest stage. There will only be three submission periods per year. So meetings suggested based on end date. Fellows to contact the FLF renewal team if not suitable. A more simplified documentation, the removal of the R4RI, removal of the UKRI Innovate UK relevant section, and there's also an extension to the case support document. The removal of the peer review was to reduce the community burden with written peer review when already have, um, they've already been through a rigorous assessment process. And it allows us to engage panel members who have knowledge of the FLF scheme and ensure an informed assessment, noting the nuances of the scheme. So just looking at an overview of the timelines, as I said, there will be three submission periods per year and fellows are advised on which meeting to apply to based on their end date, inclusive of any no cost extensions that have been applied. This information is used to build panels. And if you're unable to apply to a meeting allocated, we can apply to an, or you can apply to an alternative meeting by contacting the FLF renewal team. The call is an open call on JES and applications can be received at any time. As I said, there will be three cutoff periods per year and we will allocate applications to meetings depending on when they are received. Fellows are apply, advised to apply to a meeting based on their end dates and this should be inclusive of any no cost extensions that have been received. In order to keep the assessment period shorter, we will be using data that anticipates which applications we should expect at which meeting so that panels can be built prior to the closing date for cutoffs. If fellows are not able to submit their suggested meeting, we ask that we are notified three months ahead of closing if you will be applying to a different meeting so that we can ensure we build a panel representative of the remits. This is a nuance of a cross council scheme where we fund the breadth of UKRI remit so it can't be matched to standing expert panels with ease. So what do fellows need to submit? So there are some mandatory attachments. So case for support, six sides of A4, justification of resources, two sides of A4, the head of department supporting statement, two sides of A4, 
and an additional activities document, which is for academic fellows only, which is one side of A4, and for non-academic only, the finance form. There may be other mandatory documents required depending on the application, for example, NHS costs, animal usage facilities, etc. So the application assessment. So the panel is created with the support of UKRI councils and UKRI, um, and they're planned based on projected end dates and anticipated applications. So assessment panel considers applications and they make a decision on whether the prima facie is agreed or not, and to award a renewal or invite the fellow for further discussion. So if there are minor queries, we may seek to resolve these via email to reduce the impact on the fellow and panel, and the host may be contacted if there is a lack of host support demonstrated or commitment to an open-ended contract. Feedback from the panel and fellows found the discussion useful and helped in providing some direction in the fellowship and explore their ideas in more detail. So looking at the assessment criteria, um, there is a consideration of whether there is an added value of continuing the fellowship mechanism of support, making sure that it's clearly demonstrated. So the four areas of the assessment criteria will cover the research and innovation excellence, the fellow and their development, impact into strategic relevance, and the research and innovation environment and costs. So the, the five main bullet points that link back to the assessment criteria, but these will be the underpinning points that the panel will be considering alongside that. So the prima facie should demonstrate the following. So the clear evidence of fellows development and leadership during the fellowship to date, contribution to the research and innovation landscape, including realization of short-term impacts of the original proposal and how the fellow has responded to unforeseen challenges, a distinctive and outstanding research or innovation project with robust methodology and that the fellow articulates a continued route to realize potential and clearly demonstrates the added value of continuing the fellowship mechanism of support and that the host organization has confirmed that an open-ended contract has been attained or described a definitive route to an open-ended contract, which will be attainable by the completion of the fellowship. So I'm now going to move on to some commonly asked questions um, that um, do come up um, regularly. So the following slides um, may will cover some of these um, questions. And there may be some crossover to information provided in the initial section of the presentation, but hopefully provide more context to the areas raised. So beginning with no cost extension. So a no cost extension is to the current FLF Fellowship Award, and it's to compensate for time that has been lost due to a delay during the first four or priority years. The um, delays um, will cover things such as maternity, paternity leave, changes in working patterns, lapses in recruitment time, and this also includes COVID-19, <clears throat> excuse me, related impacts. The renewal must not substitute a no-cost extension, um, and it's um, to report on progress and request funding for a further three years. Where possible, no-cost extension to current awards should be submitted and approved prior to applying for the renewal. So we do um, encourage the fellows to submit the no cost extensions as soon as the final details are known to help with the planning of the renewal and ensure, ensure a smooth handover between the two pieces of funding. So we are aware of the effects of COVID-19 um, has um, possibly had on projects and um, we recognise that, um, that this pandemic did cause major disruption and want to ensure that our fellows are not penalised at the renewal for any disruption to their careers and there are a, number, a couple of routes to consider here. So the no cost extensions, as mentioned, UKRI has also allowed no cost extensions to the original fellowship grant where COVID-19 has impacted progress. And we would encourage that fellows explore this route if there are significant impacts on their project. In the event that a fellow needs to submit a no cost extension after the renewal has been submitted, we will work with the fellow to establish the best step forward on a case by case basis. A no cost extension may not be requested if the renewal is not successful, though to reiterate there is a presumption of funding so we do not expect there to be a low success rate. In addition to this, panel members will be provided with guidance specific to this 
But in summary, any disruption noted that cannot be resolved by the use of no cost extensions will not be penalised. And the assessors will be asked to consider the application, and consider the unequal impacts that COVID-19 related disruption might have had on the progress to date in the fellowship. Where impacts are known, we will encourage that you use the case for support document to outline any challenges that you have had to overcome. And likewise, any potential complications from the ongoing pandemic will not affect the assessment of renewal applications. You should submit, should submit your application based on information available at the point of submission. And where applicable, any known application specific impacts of COVID-19 should be accounted for. There is no requirement to include contingency plans. So costs. So costs may be held for three years up to the value of 567,000 KFUKRF funding and awards less than three years are costed on a proportionate ratio. So if, for example, a one year renewal fellowship would total 189,000 of UKRI um, funding. Um, to clarify that the limit to funding applies to all and there are no exceptions to this, the allocation per fellow is part of the financial model and our hands are tied with what we can do. So, for example, just because one fellow doesn't apply doesn't mean another could have double funds. So costs are not restricted to just, for example, cohort costs or engagement activities. The funding, so long as justified and in line with scheme guidance, can be requested as per the original part of the fellowship. It's not possible to roll forward unspent funds from the original fellowship. The funding you receive comes with terms and conditions. And in turn, the budget allocated to us also comes with terms and conditions which di dictate how these funds are awarded and managed. A portion of your salary, which is contributed by your host organisation, may be claimed for within grant proposals submitted under your proposed additional activities. And just to say that staff and partners, um, funds can be requested for staff employed in the original FLF fellowship for, and for new staff employed. And there can be new partners and collaborators um, can be included if applicable. So moving on to time commitments and additional activities, um, and, and this is academia hosted fellows only. So in years one and two of the original fellowship, fellows were allowed to spend a maximum of six hours, which is pro rata for part time fellowships per week, or a maximum of two clinical sessions. For commitments that were not part of their fellowship but, but supported their broader professional or career development. In years three and four, the time available for non fellowship commit commitments increased to 25% of a fellow's time. And again, this is pro rata for part time fellowships. For the renewal, the time available for non fellowship activities increases to 50% of a fellow's time, again, again pro rata, plus the six hours per week as per the UKRI terms and conditions. The non-fellowship activities must be justified within the additional activities document, which is mandatory in the renewal application, noting that the actual time spent on these commitments might not yet be confirmed, especially those which are reliant on grant proposals being successful. These activities must be of benefit to the fellow's professional or career development and be at the fellow's discretion. So a change in host. So um, a change in host is allowed at the renewal stage. Um, also, um, a movement between business and academia is allowed at the renewal, so long as they're eligible for UKRI funding. All that we would require for a um, change in host is an additional um, head of department letter of support. So one from the original host, which is the backward look, and one from the proposed new host, which is um, more of the forward look. So um, change in project. So um, a, a progression of the current FLF for, um, fellowship and not a new fellowship. So the renewal should be a natural progression from the current FLF fellowship, leading on from the progress of the fellowship to date. What we don't want to see is a totally new project. UCAR recognise that there may be changes in the direction of fellowships. Work packages may not have planned out as thought. Outcomes and findings may discover something unexpected. And with this, we appreciate that fellowships may need to take another direction. The renewal does provide a route to explore new avenues, and it would be appropriate to use the case for support to explain this um, change in direction. As with anything, the main thing is to justify in the application so that the panel members can see how the renewal application has developed 
leading on from the original current application. So we're now going to move on to um, a little bit of information about the FLF development. So hopefully a lot of you are aware of the network already. So this is primarily for those who aren't aware of the network or those who haven't managed to engage with it yet. So as part of UKRI being a signatory of the Concordat to support the career development of researchers, the Future Leaders Fellowships Development Network was established to make it easy for UKRI to demonstrate this commitment to, to development and leadership. So within the Concordat, it noticed that researchers and innovators should engage in a minimum, minimum 10 days professional development pro rata per year. There is no requirement to engage with the development network, but our repeated good feedback on the offering of the network shows that it is a very worthwhile resource on our fellows. So what is the network? So the network is it delivers leadership training and development opportunities, and all fellows have access to join the network, which is funded by UKRI. Not only can fellows get involved in their, activity, in their activities on offer, but they are also invited to help shape the network so that it provides support that is useful for them. There are three aims of the network, and these are to inspire, so insights and opportunities to enable the delivery of, the, of solutions to global concerns improvements and redesign of the research environment, informing policy and engaging with the public. Also to convene and collaborate. So a development of a community and the facilitation of peer-to-peer -peer engagement. A tailored leadership mentoring programme brings fellows together with a diverse mix of mentors, individuals and peers to promote practice sharing and problem solving groups. And finally, to develop and upskill. So a responsive training and development program, including a bespoke, bespoke 360 feedback and coaching program. So there are opportunities to engage. Um, the network aims to engage fellows in every level of their governance and delivery. And um, the fellows can engage across the three strands of activity as um, highlighted on the slide. The network is led by Edinburgh Innovations, a spin-out organisation of the University of Edinburgh and comprises of partners from eight institu institutions across the UK. And the network aims to engage fellows in every level of their governance and delivery. For example, fellows are invited to sit on governance panels to design and co-deliver events and workshops and request access to broad research networks. The network offer many different types of events and opportunities spanning three main strands. As I said um, previously, training and development, community and cohort experience, and research and innovation. So the PLUS funds. The PLUS fund is a pot of flexible funding up to £25,000 uh, 25, per, um, per project, available to fellows in the Future Leaders Development Network um, scheme. The funds are designed to support collaboration and or the delivery of novel training and network opportunities. So part of enrolling within the, within the network, they have access to the PLUS fund um, and it may be used to support collaboration between fellows and for delivery of novel training or networking opportunities. Examples given are not exhaustive, but just a selection of projects which have been funded to date. So um, there's the development of a toolkit to support institutions and ECR line managers to better champion career development and progression of their ECRs. An incubator workshop organized by fellows from different cohorts that will identify emerging topics in a broad field relevant to a number of FLFs and create a network of experts from science, industry and policymakers that will address these topics. And a series of workshops to collaborate collaboratively explore the challenges and opportunities of working with creative industries. So applications around improving research culture or broad topics which appeal to a large number of fellows are particularly encouraged and we often highlight funded applications in our quarterly fellows newsletter. So finally, um, so just for some contact details um, listing the post award team and the general network um, queries. So if you have any questions um, about the development network, then you can contact um, the team at the um, UKRI using the post award address or the network using one of the addresses listed here. 
And just finally, um, just generally for any queries about the renewal scheme, um, the renewal team can be contacted at the FLF renewal um, at UKRI.org. Um, we're here to answer any questions. So obviously feel free to um, contact us should you have any queries about um, your renewal meeting or, or the scheme in general. Thank you for your time and thank you very much. <laughs>